For the last week, I've been using Android 6.0 Marshmallow on a Nexus 6, and as you may know, I've owned many iPhones over the years, and I've also called myself an Apple fanboy. Surprisingly, I've really enjoyed my time with stock Android, and over the last week, haven't thought once to switch back to my iPhone. My name is Michael with Tech Period, and these are my impressions of Android from an iPhone user's perspective. So it all starts with the home screen, the first thing you see when you unlock the device. And I'm not going to lie, you can get a lot more information on the Android home screen than on the iPhones. You can add a calendar widget, a large clock widget, and even a Twitter widget, and a lot more. With the addition of widgets, the home screen still looks very clean with Android's implementation of material design throughout the entire operating system. What can I say about the icons? They each hold their own style, they reflect the app's purpose. Unlike iOS, each icon has a different shape. It seems when each icon is shaped differently, the app can stand on its own instead of blending into everything else. I think developing an app icon for Android would be easier than iOS because the app icon for Android can hold its own style and better reflect the app that it's representing. With iOS, you're restricted to a rounded square, no matter what the app is. I've actually changed up the icons on this phone that you're seeing right now, and I'll talk more about this later. The customization is second to none, even without a hack or root. In the settings, you can change a lot, but in the developer settings, you can change very specific items such as animation speed and a lot more advanced things to have your phone perform the way you want it to. You may notice that my icons aren't stock from Google, but I'm not running any custom launcher. I did this using an app called Awesome Icons. It lets you install any icon pack you want, then apply them without a launcher. I feel this is great on a Nexus device because the Google launcher is great, but the icons could use some changes. The icon pack is called CandyCons, and the link will be in the description. Now let's talk about Google Now. It has gotten to the point where it's so accurate, it's kinda creepy. It even took my age into consideration and knew the place I went every day was school and not work. It knows how often I search for hockey scores, and places upcoming games and scores directly into the cards. It's really useful and I love it, but it kinda feels like Google is stalking me. One of the newest features announced in Android Marshmallow was Google Now on Tap. It scans what's on your screen and gives you relevant information. For example, I can scan a tweet and it gives me information from that tweet. It's a really cool feature, but I just forget to use it most of the time. Moving on to the specific hardware of my Android experience, I'm using a 32GB Nexus 6 in the midnight blue color. The screen is absolutely huge and is great for consuming content and media. The resolution is 2560 by 1440, which means I can watch crispy 1440p videos in the YouTube app. On many reviews, I read that the camera is just average, but I have to disagree because this camera is taking way better photos than my iPhone ever has. On screen now are some sample images so you can see for yourself. It also records 4K videos, but with only 32GB of onboard storage, you won't be able to keep much 4K video stored on the phone. The Nexus 6 also has a very solid metal frame and a plastic back. It gives it a very solid feel in the hand and the weight makes it feel even more premium. One issue I had was the placement of the power and volume buttons. I really wish they were more separated so I didn't change the volume when I wanted to lock my screen, but the texture on the power button does help a bit though. The front facing speakers are an experience I've never had before. Since I'm coming from an iPhone, I'm used to a single side firing speaker. These two stereo speakers are fantastic for video in portrait mode and make for a much more immersive experience. Quick charging is also on board and is great because I can juice up my phone quite a bit in a 15 minute charge. Speaking of charging, you're going to need to charge this phone a lot because battery life is the one downside. With the battery powering the 1440p display, the battery drains really, really fast, and I have to recharge the phone in the middle of the day. So, coming to a conclusion here, I would say that my Android experience was eye-opening. I can definitely say that iOS now has some great competition. At the moment, I'm still using the Nexus 6, and in fact, I wrote the entire script for this video on the Nexus 6 using Evernote. If I must sum up this experience in one word, I would use remarkable. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Mike with Tech Period and I'll see you in the next one.